This is Twit. Print Nightmare is not CVE 2021-1675. Uh, probably the biggest nightmare about Print Nightmare, aside from the fact that it's being exploited in the wild right now, I mean today, okay, after Microsoft thought it was fixed, is the incredible amount of confusion surrounding multiple stumbles that both Microsoft and some well-meaning security researchers have made. This has just been a mess. Um, there are two related but separate and independent issues at play which affect all current and all previous versions of the Windows print spooler service, which Windows starts up and runs by default across the board and being a print spooler, a trusted component, it's, of course, running with full system kernel privileges. Now, Windows Print Spooler has historically been a source of many serious vulnerabilities. Uh, and you will all remember, Leo, you were sitting with me when 10 years ago, it was the exploitation of it. It provided the exploitation uh which was leveraged by Stuxnet to take over, spin up, and damage the centrifuges being used by Iran's nuclear enrichment program at the time. And it's been, again, I mean, it's a constant source of problems. And, you know, there are things, you know, there, there's, there's the concept of a lemon, right, where you buy a car and it's just got one thing wrong after another and – and in fact, there's a law, I think, right? The lemon law that yeah. at some point you're just allowed to say, hey, <laughs> take this back. Is this the lemon <laughs> flaw? Is that what you're talking? <laughs> well, no, I'm kind of put in mind of Adobe Flash. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, that was, was originally, yeah. it was a, well, and think about it. It was originally written before security was an issue. So was the print spooler. I'm sure there's still code in there from Windows 95 when they thought, oh, we need to spool our sprinting. Wait, uh, spool our printing. Uh, <laughs> or pool our sprinting. Either one. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we're still, we've still got that code, which some, probably some summer intern, because I mean, okay, that's a perfect thing. For Microsoft to have given a summer intern, oh, you know, give it to Harry because it doesn't matter. It's the print spooler. It's going to work or not. We've still, we're still running Harry's code in now. And, you know, domain, no, domain controllers are being taken over as a consequence. Anyway, here we are 10 years later with thanks to Harry's summer internship. A local privilege escalation vulnerability and also a separate remote code execution vulnerability. And get this. During last month's June 8th Patch Tuesday, Microsoft believed that they had patched and closed the vulnerability. They only thought there was one. That was the, the local privilege escalation. They identified it as 2021-1675. But... As Will Dorman, the vulnerability analyst at the CERT Coordination Center, tweeted, he said, quote, I've published a vulnerability note on this. I suspect that Microsoft will need to issue a new CVE to capture what print nightmare exploits, as it sure isn't what Microsoft patched. As CVE 2021-1675. In other words, okay, now, that would lead you to believe they patched the wrong thing. But it turns out, no. A Chinese researcher with NS Focus who reported the original actual vulnerability to Microsoft explained last Thursday in a tweet, CVE 2021-1675 is meant to fix print nightmare. But it seems that they just test with the test case in my report, which is more elegant and also more restricted. So the patch is incomplete. And then he has a little frowny face in his tweet. Okay, so uh, this, it, understanding what he just said, this is not the behavior 
of a Microsoft whose OS the world can depend upon as much as it currently does. The NS Focus tweet suggests that rather than carefully examining the researchers provided proof of concept and using it to reveal and understand the whole problem that it was intended to reveal, someone at Microsoft, maybe late for lunch, apparently quickly applied a patch to shut down the example code, but without resolving the underlying actual problem, which you could still work around after the patch had been applied to Windows. Okay, so then when this, re when this researcher saw what was not done last month, he attempted to reach out again to at MSF. MSFT SEC response. Failing to get satisfaction, he tweeted, my case of pound print nightmare is closed and I can't log in to MSRC portal because there is no Microsoft account option, which I used. He says, then how can I report that you not fix CVE 2021-1675 properly? And he says, Perens, another call is kept vulnerable. He says, that is your cooperation? And then he adds the at MSFT sec response so that Microsoft uh, security response would receive the tweet. And then the situation gets even worse. When just before the end of June, another Chinese security vendor, QIANXIN, announced that they found a way to exploit the vulnerability to achieve both local privilege escalation and remote code execution and published a demo video while deliberately refraining from sharing additional technical details in the interest of responsible disclosure. But the Hong Kong-based cybersecurity company sang for published, seeing that, thought, okay, well, apparently we're talking about this now. They, they published an independent deep dive of the same vulnerability to GitHub, which included fully working proof of concept code. So they apparently mistakenly believed that Microsoft had fixed well, it when, fixed. Micro <laughs> when Microsoft hadn't, like, because the guy, you know, didn't really... That's Give so it the bad. time it needed, right? So they they included in their p publication on GitHub fully working proof of concept code. <laughs> the proof of concept remained publicly accessible for several hours before they someone I'm sure told them, "Hey, you realize you just published a proof of concept for a problem that Microsoft didn't fix it works. on the eighth on the eighth of June. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's God. not a proof of concept. It's a it's a proof of ex exploit. So they pulled it down, but it had been forked by that time. So the proof of concept remains available. I've got links to them in the show notes. Oh, God. <laughs> and so they they posted the principal re security researcher at Sangfor posted we deleted the proof of concept of print nightmare to mitigate this vulnerability please update windows to the latest version which eh, doesn't work or disable the spooler service which is really the only thing you can do to completely shut this thing down Unfortunately, as I said, updating Windows won't help. Hopefully, updating Windows next Tuesday will. Meanwhile, this is in the wild, right? I mean, this is being actively exploited. So do they so, need access to your machine? How can they get to the principaler? Yes, it is a local... Well, okay, that's complicated too. One of the things that's been happening among security researchers like during this drama is that they've all been publishing they've they've been trying to publish flow charts to show what you turn on and what you turn off and where you go. Okay? So and you're showing it on the screen. I've got it in the show notes here. This is the current flow chart 
which was produced by the cert guy, Will Dorman, de- after his post-patch attempt to get us a, a handle on this. And so the short version is just, just if you if you don't actually know that you need print spooler, for example, a domain controller probably doesn't have a printer on it, right? It's not, You don't have users dropping print jobs onto a domain controller. That's not what they're for. You know, print spoolers are typically on your local machine. I mean, it, you don't even have to use it, right? You could turn it off and your sh- machine could still print. It just ties up the app while it's printing instead of dumping it into the spool queue so that it can say, yeah, okay, we're doing that in the background. But it needs so, RPC. You need remote access t- to, true. to use this, at least to remotely exploit it. I the, guess you could do exactly, it Exactly, the remote yeah. exploitation. The, 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 the biggest problem is that it is a local privilege escalation, and that is in the toolkit now of the bad guys. As, as, we've, as we've often said, it sounds like a remote code execution is really bad bad and it is but there's lots of uses for yeah. you know malicious uses for local privilege escalation where for example many times you can do something for example like uh you you can get you can log on to an ftp server as an anonymous you know a very unprivileged user but if you if if that ftp server gives you where where you're logged in unprivileged and even if it was running in an unprivileged account right to be really safe well if it's got a flaw that allows you to use an escalation of privilege now you're root now your right. system privilege and you can do whatever you want it's, so it's not at all these days i would expect it's almost universally the case that you don't it's a chain of exploits it's rarely just a single exploit you get this chain that slowly gets you closer yeah, yeah. and closer to your yeah. goal. Only when you purchase logon credentials <laughs> for an an, R, an RDP server from the dark web, and it's like, ah, it works. still works. How nice! Oh, yeah. God. What what do I want to do today? Oh lord! So this print nightmare was well named. It is a nightmare. It is. A, I mean, it should be an embarrassment to everybody who dipped their oar in the water of this thing and you know paddled in the wrong direction. I can't because... believe that the patch was written <laughs> oh. to the published code as opposed to understanding the problem and fixing it. That's yes. like, oh, I got all the questions to the test. What do I need to learn anything for? It's exactly. so dumb. Exactly. Whoever it was, just just like thought okay I mean, maybe they're in a hurry may i like i said maybe they were late for lunch i we can't, i don't know <laughs> we don't know <laughs> yeah but we're still with we still with the problem unfortunately hey, joey all the guys are going out for chinese come on hurry up <laughs> exactly. i just gotta write this patch i'll be right there yeah yeah because it's got to get out on the on june 8th and so oh wow so what, what about the vulnerability itself? It boils down to the ability of any non-privileged user to bypass the authentication barrier, which prevents unprivileged users from installing whatever possibly malicious printer drivers they choose. Specifically, any attacker who can bypass the authentication which protects the, and the name of the API is RPC Add Printer Driver API, can install a malicious print driver. Microsoft's documentation claims that the client needs to hold, that is the, 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 the client, the user in, who's calling the Add Printer Driver API must have the SE load driver privilege, which makes sense, for the add printer driver call to succeed. When, when you make a call to add printer driver, your security privileges are checked to see whether you are holding the load printer driver privilege. It turns out Microsoft's documentation is wrong. You don't need to have the load printer driver. A call to the validate object access is being made, and it turns out that due to a mistake in the code that sets up the call's parameters, the user has control over the validation check 
and is able to skip it. Which, despite the fact that the people who dis who disclosed this confidentially to Microsoft said this, Microsoft said, okay, how do we, like, you know, I'm late for Chinese. How do I fix this so this isn't true any longer? And they made a patch that fixed so that the proof of concept would no longer succeed, but the problem wasn't solved. Wow. So if the target is a Windows domain controller, a normal domain user, an unprivileged user, can connect to the spooler service, which, in the, okay, should not be running in a domain controller. Hello? You know, I mean, one of the things that we all used to do, those of us, remember Leo in the old days, is we'd go through this exhausting and exhaustive list of services and that Windows you know, XP was running and just shut off a whole bunch of crap that Microsoft had running, t taking up cycles, slowing down our boots, consuming RAM, you know, stuff like whatever synchronized folder uh, link transport or something was. It was like, well, okay, I'm not, there's no one for me to synchronize to. What's this doing running? And, oh, anyway, they just turn it all on because they'd rather that than have you call to support if, you know, something you try to do doesn't work. But, anyway, as a consequence, apparently Windows domain controllers the world over are running print spoolers, which they don't need to run, which are vulnerable, and which allow an unprivileged user to install their own malicious driver, take over the Windows domain controller, and then, you know these days, spread ransomware throughout the domain. So, oh, and before signing off, the researcher noted, there are more hidden bombs in Spooler, oh. which are not publicly known. Oh, good. We will share more RCE and LPE vulnerabilities in Windows Spooler. Thanks so much. Please stay, play that. Yeah. Please stay tuned and await our black hat talks, uh -huh. diving into Spooler, discovering LPE and RCE vulnerabilities in Windows Printer. Mm. <laughs> so that ought to be next month. Mm. Yeah. The uh, the zero patch guys have quickly produced one of their cool micro patches for this. If you need to keep your print Spooler online for the next week, and believe that you might become a victim of this before, hopefully, next Tuesday's Patch Tuesday. Either the guy came back for lunch and realized he'd made a mistake, or they some, they kicked him out of his seat and put somebody who actually Joey. knows how to patch problems. <laughs> Whoa. So, with any luck, this will finally be fixed permanently, and we can put the printer nightmare behind us. Wow. Yeah. So you. So, so I'm just trying to remember. You don't have to use a print spooler. You could still print without a print spooler. Right. No. If you turn it off, it's everything still works still just prints. fine. Okay. You just, shut the the machine down. may be tied up while you're printing, but Correct. printers are so fast now. Yeah. And a, actually, not even the machine, just the app. Uh, yeah. You know, it'll just like show printing, and it'll stay up instead of disappearing. And then, I mean, and it's almost annoying because if you do have a problem with your printer, right, that it goes to the spooler and, and then dies there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it. <laughs> the spooler has always been a bag of hurt. That is never. I can <laughs> problems since Windows ninety five with the print spooler, mm -hmm. constant. Yeah, it's because of that summer intern, the intern, Harry. Man, he didn't yeah. know what he was doing. He he was there for a couple <laughs> months. He said, "Yeah, here's your." I can write that. How hard could it be? It's not. Uh, <laughs> It's not rocket science. <laughs> no.